Ben. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, looking for sources of RFI, radio frequency interference, uh, in your house and in your shack. Uh, sources that may cause noise with your uh, DXing or even your transmission, although I won't go into the transmission part. Um, but uh, if you're a DXer, I in particular uh, DX uh, AM or medium wave broadcast band and sometimes I'll also do the long wave you know that uh, noise sources around the house can be a real a real pain um, in your reception. Um, some of these noises go away in the higher bands, but uh, uh, definitely, it's definitely useful to identify these sources. And basically what I'm going to do is use a, a small handheld uh, radio. This is a Texan PL380 and it has uh, long wave, uh, medium wave, as well as FM broadcast bands and uh, several of the different uh, shortwave uh, radio bands that you can uh, characterize the noise sources and figure out uh, what, uh, what bands they're interfering. And then if you do figure out what's going on, you can maybe address some of them or at least turn off some of the electrical devices that are causing the noise when you're, when you're DXing. So uh, next I'll basically just go around my house and identify several different short sources and uh, show you how they, they behave on some of the different bands on this radio. So one of the more classic sources of RFI in the house is a dimmer switch. And you can see when I turn this on, it creates quite a bit of noise, which depending on how you adjust it, it changes the sound of the noise. Sometimes turning on and off changes as well. Now one of the major sources of interference in a lot of our modern houses are light bulbs, in particular fluorescent light bulbs, and here's a great example of it. Now in addition to the fluorescent light bulbs, we also have LED light bulbs which also give off quite a bit of noise. This one in particular is a Cree light bulb that says it's a better LED light bulb, but as you can see, it still gives off quite a bit of noise. So uh, the noise does decrease as you move away, and this is true with fluorescent light bulbs as well. But as you can see, it still gives off quite a bit of noise. Now the last light bulb here is your standard old-fashioned incandescent and actually this is a halogen incandescent. It has a small halogen capsule on the inside but you'll notice when you turn it on there's not any significant increase in noise. Even when I move it closer noise increase is minimal at most but that's a standard incandescent light bulb. Now here's something everybody else has in the house. The cell phone's not even showing anything on the screen. When I turn on the screen, it gets even worse. Which decreases when I turn off the screen again. But, as you can see, there's quite a bit of noise and this isn't even connected to any of the uh, higher voltage, 120 voltage sockets. Now here's another interesting one that I found. Uh, if you'll have kids, uh, you'll have one of these. This is a thermometer. That sends out a signal, battery operated. So not all battery devices are very are of quiet. Now we all know that chargers and wall warts are also uh, pretty bad sources of RFI. Um, they can even last a little bit when, when they're uh, not plugged in. This one in particular is for charging iPhones, you can use it for any sorts of USB device, but USB devices. But when you plug it in, it sounds like someone's screaming. When you pull it out, It still goes on for five or ten seconds until the, the capacitors inside discharge. And this is a standard cheapy wall wart for charging phones, but other wall warts, adapters, whatever you want to call them, will cause similar noise. Another one you might have in your house if you have kids. This is a radio control car battery charger. Watch this thing. Good for 
for several feet away, causing some noise. This one doesn't have capacitors that discharge slowly though. Now with the battery out, it's not quite as bad, but you can still hear it. Um, and then of course, when you put the battery in, <laughs> it goes wild. That's a big source of noise, obviously. Here's a standard switching power supply you'll find on many electronic devices nowadays. A little bit of delay on it. It also discharges slowly as you pull it out. <clears throat> Here's something that I found to be interesting. This is uh, this is our our microwave oven. Uh, there's nothing you know, really coming out of it now, but when, as soon as I put any kind of time on it, like a clear the time, it goes away. Put some more time on it, it's not even turned on. So basically the display is making some noise. Then, when I actually turn the microwave on, that makes quite a bit. Which goes away as you move away, but still quite a bit of noise. It adds to the overall RFI noise, noise field in your house. Old fashioned fluorescence, yeah, they got some noise. One of the more egregious examples of noise in my house is this wine refrigerator. Now, here's on the low end of the broadcast band. That's at the high end of the broadcast band. And on some of the short waves, it's the highest end of the short wave in this radio. There's the lowest end. Still here pretty good. 2300 megahertz per kilohertz. 3150 kilohertz. 3850. 3700. 5700. You can see the higher I go up the band. It's not as bad. Now when you get close to where the motors are back here, you can hear it still. And that's back in the uh, high end of the broadcast band, low end of the broadcast band, AM broadcast band. Here's my cable modem. Stereo next to the TV. Probably the display. Here is the Apple, Apple TV. Just turn it on. Didn't seem to change much. Here's the TV itself. Monitor. The whole change in sound you're hearing is it coming on. There's when the monitor itself comes on, they all display. And that's an LCD monitor. There's the uh, Wi Fi and the network hard drive. Quite an interesting sound. That's on 520 kilohertz. It's on 1710. It's not as bad. Oh, here's an interesting one. Well, of course, it does have a motor, electric toothbrush. Of course, another classic source of noise, uh, RFI noise in the house. However, you'll notice when it's not plugged in, and an iPad. Right now it's off. A little bit of noise in the monitor comes on. But in general, the iPad seems pretty good compared to some other devices. This alarm clock is not too bad.
Now in checking out the shack itself, I have this uh, older plasma t TV in here which I sometimes use for a monitor. Right now it's completely off. It's turned on. And as you can see, that's quite a bit of noise. The lower you get on the broadcast band, it's even worse. Other devices. My handling is pretty good on the upper end of the AM band. Equalizer. Quantum phaser. These are incandescent lights, but on the other side, I have one with a fluorescent bulb. And it causes noise in the incandescent bulb as well. Both incandescents. These are on the same switch, so you can see that the RFI is not going out of the bulbs. So as you can see, there's many sources of RFI in the house that probably brings up the background noise, especially on the lower end of the, uh, the medium wave and the uh, lower end of the short wave band. Uh, it seems to be where most of the noise is concentrated in most of the electronic devices. Um, obviously, the seems, what seems like to be the worst two, at least in my case, are light bulbs and uh, probably electronic devices such as uh, laptops, uh, dimmers. Now, when I do some long wave DXAM, I'll always, always make sure that the, anything with a dimmer on it is off. And in my shack in general, I have incandescent light bulbs instead of LED or fluorescent light bulbs. Now, there's some talk saying that there's some uh, LED light bulbs out there that are better than others, and maybe at some point I'll, I'll take a look at different brands and different kinds and see what, uh, what I can find if there's any quieter ones than that. But basically, small handheld radio, um, putting it near various devices, you can see where the RFI is coming from. And of course, with all the devices we have, uh, if you're in a neighborhood, you know, a regular subdivision type neighborhood, you're going to have everybody having these noisy devices. Um, and even though, as you can see, when you move closer or farther uh, away from the device, the farther away you move, the quieter the noise gets, it adds to the whole uh, background noise. The higher you go up in frequency, there seems to be less noise. Uh, I'm sure there's other devices that cause that, but I'm only able to check up, to the, up into the FM range. Uh, but um, you can also generalize that the lower you go in frequency, the worse the noise gets. So if you're into medium wave or the low end of uh, 160 meter ham radio or uh, the lower end of the shortwave radio band or long wave or even lower still, uh, RFI is going to be a significant issue uh, in and around the house, at least with the number of sources involved. Um, getting rid of the noise, you can try ferrite beads. Uh, in my case, uh, light bulbs in the shack are definitely going to be incandescent. So use as many incandescents as you can, at least nearest to your equipment or nearest to any antennas you have because any antennas are going to pick it up. I noticed that um, when I'm listening to long wave, if I have one of those dimmers upstairs in the other part of my house on, my antennas, which are 30 to 40 and 50 feet away in some cases, will pick up that dimmer noise. Plus, I think some of it goes back into the uh, wiring of my house as well and gets into everything. So, the lower you go, make sure your noisiest devices are off if possible. Um, try to have your shack on its own circuit. Um, try to keep as many devices off as possible or run them on battery. With laptops, it seems like there's still noise present because of the monitors, but on battery, uh, by itself, it seems to be a little bit lower. This is not going to be the same for everybody in all cases. Um, use, uh, use wall warts that are uh, linear with a transformer inside rather than switching, uh, which is done by transistors and diodes. Those are going to be a lot noisier than the, the, the linear ones with the transformers in it. So basically a heavy wall wart it probably has a transformer. It's probably going to be a lot quieter than a really light one that's going to be uh, changed over from AC to DC by transistors and diodes. Anyway, I hope this is interesting, uh, you find it useful, hope that you can get rid of the RFI or at least minimize it in your shack, and um, like I said, maybe uh, since light bulbs seem to be the biggest issue for me, uh, I'm going to try to look into different types of light bulbs as I've heard that there are several or there are some that are better than others, and uh, I'll investigate that and try to do a semi-scientific testing of that.
Thanks for watching.